Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'll be showing you how to replace your upper shock bearing on your Honda dirt bike. The shock bearings on your dirt bike are a high wear item that often get overlooked. If you want your suspension to work right, you'll want these bearings in good condition. In this video, we'll show you how to inspect and replace the upper shock bearing. Now, the bearing on this bike is a little bit unique compared to some of the other brands. This is off a 2005 CRF 450R, and the procedure will be similar for a lot of 250 and 450 models from Honda. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. To do this job, you'll need some common hand tools. You'll need a few different sizes of sockets, some grease, rags, safety glasses, and we'll also be using a vise. For parts, we'll need a shock bearing kit. Now these kits come with everything you need, but you do have some options. You can get like this tusk or all balls kit. You can get the bearings individually, upper or lower. We chose to go with the Pivot Works. It comes with the upper and lower bearing, even though today we'll just be focusing on replacing the upper bearing. If you need to know how to replace the lower, we do have a linkage video for that. So be sure to check that out and always refer to your model specific service manual when you're doing this job. Before we replace the shock bearing, we want to inspect and remove it from the bike. And how you do that is you'll put your bike on the center stand and with the rear wheel off the ground, you'll grab your swing arm and hold the bike steady and pull up on that. And you're feeling for any play. If you do have any play, you want to have a friend check and see where that play is coming from. And that way you know what bearings need service. Now removing the shock from your bike is really easy. You'll swing the subframe up and you've got an upper and lower mounting bolt you'll remove and slide this thing right out. As you can see, we're already to that point. So we're ready to go after this upper bearing. The first step in removing this bearing is to remove the seals on both sides of the shock using a pick or small screwdriver. Pay attention to the orientation of the seals as you take them out. As you can see, these seals are in pretty bad shape and it's no wonder the bearing went bad. Before we remove the bearing, I wanna talk about something that makes this shock unique. The bearing can only come out one side and that's because this back side has a step in the housing and the bearing can't come out that way. So this other side has a larger di outside diameter in the housing and once we remove this circlip, the bearing can exit out of that side. To get this bearing out, we need to remove this stop ring that's preloaded by the bearing. And how we'll do that is press the bearing further down into the housing, and that way we can remove the stop ring, and then we'll press the bearing all the way out. To press the bearing away from the stop ring, we'll use a socket that fits the outer race. Now this 18 millimeter is about right for us on that. So on the back side, you'll also need a socket. And the reason for that is you can't have this inner race hitting on the vise, which would stop it from moving back. So we actually have a 29 millimeter socket that fits over that nice. Now we'll go ahead and put it into the vise. It's pretty helpful to have an extra set of hands while you do this. Keep in mind that when you press this in, you're going a really small amount. So if it bottoms out, don't force anything. Now we've got our shock bearing pressed back a little bit and ours made a little bit of a popping noise. So we know it's pressed back and the vise also got tight and you don't want to force it past that point. Now we have the lower shock shaft in the vise to hold this steel. And to remove this circlip, the easiest technique that I've found is to hold the back of the stop ring with a small screwdriver and then you'll take a pick in that groove and pull up on the clip. Then you can work it out. With our clip out, we'll now press out this bearing and we'll be using the same socket and vise method and we'll press the bearing towards the side that had the circlip in it. After you press the bearing out, be careful to catch the bearing and sockets as you release the vise. With the bearing out, we'll clean and inspect this bearing bore and make sure there's no damage to the stop ring groove or this lip on the end of the housing. 
Next, we'll get our new bearing ready for installation by using waterproof grease and packing it inside of the bearing as best as possible. We'll also use some grease on the bearing bore of our shock housing. Now we're ready to press our new bearing into the shock using the same method that we took it out with. Now keep in mind, you'll use the smaller socket on this outer race, and then you'll use the big socket on the back side of the shock, and this will keep the back of the bearing from hitting the vise and being able to seat all the way down in the shock bore. As we put the bearing back into the shock housing, something that helps is to have the bearing already in our socket. As we line everything up into the vise, it's helpful to have an extra pair of hands. Another thing to be aware of is to keep the bearing square with the bearing bore. Now when you're pressing this in, if it gets crooked at any point, stop and realign everything and make sure that the bearing is driving in square. As we drive the bearing in, make sure the bearing bottoms out, but don't force it past that point. Now that we have our bearing installed, We'll check this stop ring groove and make sure that the bearing is pressed below that. And on the other side, we'll make sure the bearing is pressed all the way against this housing. Now, our bearing and seal kit didn't come with a new stop ring. We do recommend that you replace this and we do have them available on our website under the OEM parts diagram. They're a couple bucks, so you can go on there and get that. Now, we'll go ahead and install this and make sure it's fully seated into the stop ring groove. The next step is to seat the bearing against the stop ring. To do that, we'll use our same 18 millimeter socket from the other side and we'll press on the bearing until it lightly seats on that stop ring. Again, you'll want to inspect this and make sure the bearing is fully seated against the stop ring. The next step is to install our seals. To do this, we'll apply a little bit of grease to them, and just to be safe, we'll put a little bit of grease on our bearing. Don't forget when you install these to put them in the same orientation that they came out in. On this bike, the flat side of our seal is actually going against the bearing. When we install these onto the shock, a lot of times you can just push them on with your fingers, but to help this be a little easier for us, we'll use an appropriate size socket to do this. Once your seals are driven in, make sure they're completely flush on both sides. Okay, that's all there is to installing these upper bearings on the Honda style shocks. The last step will be to install this onto your bike and go ride. If you need one of these bearing kits, be sure to check out our website. And if you like these how-to videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.